Jewelers, excuse me for that PSA. <laughs> we'll start the go hour with my good buddy, Olin Buchanan. I'm taking the points. <laughs> From the PSA to the POS. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, uh, complimenting me on being an adult. Uh, I am a degenerate gambler. Yeah. I used to gamble quite a bit until, you know, I got a mortgage and a kid. And right. A that, yeah, that kind of, you know, every guy hearing me understands how that changes your uh, your gambling habits. But, uh, you know, I like a little action on a game. Yeah, I, look, I, I do a little fantasy football. I'm a fake fantasy football player. Like I, I pick the team like the moment before the game, like you know, before you know, I, I'm always late. I don't really pay attention to that stuff. I always tell people I don't need to do fantasy football. I live this life, baby. And they look at me like whatever. Like, but it does make it more fun. And I and I know gambling makes it more fun too. I just I'm too cheap. Well, That's again, part of it. Uh, when I gambled, I thought of it as uh, disposable income entertainment money sure you know some people are going to spend that money playing golf or whatever they like to do i enjoyed placing a better two in fact the very first time and this this is a bad thing the very first time i gambled we had a guy who worked at the longview news who was a bookie on his uh very legal but yep. he, on his own time jb the very first time I ever placed a bet, I won a three-team parlay. I won $150, which was, which was more than my weekly pay, and uh, I was hooked. You were all in. I've not won one since. See, <laughs> what I worry about is the whole, like, addicting part of it, right? Like, oh, i got to win this one. I got No, I've lost two in a row, but I'm due. I don't want to be that yeah. guy. I just It's just not for me. I become like Fred Flintstone. If you ever saw that one where he goes, bet, 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 bet. Went, that was me. I got to place a bet. I got to where I, I was almost like 10 cup. You know, I'd, I'd bet on the uh, which, which crow would fly off the fence right. first, right? <laughs> but, uh, again, got married, had a child, got a mortgage, stopped betting. Stop betting. Well, uh, I'm a loser, and I can admit it, at least when it comes to the gambling. And uh, I'm taking the over. I'm taking the points. Book it, as Tomas Romo would say. You know what? You Tomas can... looks like somebody must be has placed a bet before. Those are college kids. They place bets. The look he gave me of disgust. There was a time that this young man looked at me like as a sports father figure. Not a father, but like in the sports world, like mentor. I've known this since he was in high school. The look he gave me was like, you're not who I thought you were. Loser. The look you know, he gave me. I can remember about 20 years ago now that uh, there was a big scandal uh, at Texas because they had players that were running, you know, bookmaking within the program. Oh, yeah? Yeah. On the football side? Deal. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, uh, OB, I guess we should talk some football beyond. Well, we have been. Oh, well, yeah, you mean beyond true. gambling? Yeah, like the X's and O's <laughs> and the. Never mind. I was going to try to make that rhyme with something. So I Not, and the Jimmys and Joes and the Jimmys and Joes. So we got the marquee game this weekend, the CBS game, A and M uh, taking on Arkansas, obviously, and, and the narrative out there because every day this week I feel like I've re I've been on this roller coaster ride of the emotions of why Arkansas is so good and A&M is not. And even this morning on my drive up here, same kind of conversation came up, why some people believe Arkansas is going to give A&M a dose of reality, X, Y, Z. All right, I've heard it. The questions out there are, who has A&M played? Has that defense really been tested? They use that voice too. And uh, I answer that with, has Arkansas been tested yet? I understand that they have a marquee name on their schedule through mm -hmm. three games. I get it. If you believe that Texas is, uh, you know, a team that is has underperformed with a lot of talent, I can I can deal with that. But they're to me, A and M has done what they had to do. They need to be better. They know that, and I think at the end of this weekend, at the end of this weekend, we will know who the real A and M is and who the real Arkansas is. I think we, that's fair to say. Yeah, it's kind of like that old TV show. You probably don't remember it because you know you're a lot younger than me, but. To tell the truth. And they I remember say, that, yeah. yeah. And, well, the real Texas A&M, please stand up. And they would, you know, kind of three guys, and they'd try to fake you out like, like kids do when they're announcing their yeah. university, and then want them to stand up. Hopefully, the real A&M is a team that's more physical than they've shown, and uh, uh, at least on the offensive side, and starts taking advantage 
of you know all that skill talent. They've got the talent, and young players are going to have to play. Like I don't think I realize the magnitude of the youth on this program. I knew they were young, right? And I knew the offensive line would be new. But really, when you look at like every area, offensive line, quarterback, wide receiver, there's a lot of young players out there expected to deliver starting now. Yeah, you know, it'll be interesting to see if uh, Anaya Smith plays. Uh, they need him. Uh, they need Leighton Robinson to play. Will we see if he's if he's back or not? Right. Um, Edron Cooper, you know, if he's in their linebacker, the linebackers have got to – they're going to be very important in this game. Um, you know, and, and then guys across the offensive line, you know, you could have – you're ready, you know, you've got uh, a freshman in Bryce Foster playing. Maybe what if Ruben Father – maybe could you have two freshmen, true freshmen in the offensive line this week? Could. You absolutely could. It's – uh, but I, I feel confident in the fact that – the a and staff, on the fan show yesterday, we kind of went through, like, where does A&M have the advantage? Where does Arkansas have the advantage? And overall, I think A&M had six of the nine areas that we focused on. You know, coach, they got the advantage there. Pretty much uh, the wide receivers, I'd say A&M has the advantage there. If Arkansas is the best wide receiver in the game, A&M has the best collection of talent at wide receiver. Backfield, I think A&M's got a better backfield than Arkansas. Offensive line, we, we give it to Arkansas, but if they have those two guys injured, we'll see. That, that, that could, but right now, I, mean, I think pretty much every area of the defense was all A&M. Special teams was A&M. So the, they should win this game based on that. But we know football is more than just the check marks. Yeah, you know, the biggest cliche in uh, football is, you know, turnovers. Yep. But I think in this game, you know, it's going to – that's going to be actually be magnified. Who's going to make the big mistake? Um, if you can play a clean game, you're probably going to win. If you're A and M, if you play a clean game, yeah. But A uh, and M never does. It seems against Arkansas. One year they're up seventeen zero. Kellen throws a couple of interceptions. One year you've got the uh, you've got all the momentum. And you just stop Arkansas and Isaiah fumbles in exchange from uh, Kellen. It turns into a uh, a, a touchdown for uh, Arkansas. One year, Arkansas is about to take control. They're running inside the 10, and Armani Watts steals the ball from uh, uh, the Williams kid. I can't remember. The one whose brother's on the – Brian Williams' older brother, you know. Uh, so, you know, the the mistakes. Who's If you can – if A&M can avoid the mistakes, again, it's so cliche, but if you can avoid – in this game more than ever uh, – then you'll win. If, and if you make those same mistakes, it's going to be uh, it's going to be dicey. Yeah. Hey, uh, I didn't because I had my little gambling rant. I forgot to tell you who we are. People may not know who we are. We're Tex Hacks Radio. We're presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. We're here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. Uh, I'm going to check if I'm allowed to say hello to Dalton. Dalton gets real salty in the morning. He's busy and like, hey man, don't say hi to me today. All right. And I'm in that kind of mood. I'm going to say hi to him. I want to say hi to Dalton. How about that, Dalton? Good hey, morning to you. I'm good. Uh, kind of busy this morning. Kind of watching the Ryder Cup. So yeah, you guys are on, and I'm paying attention. But thanks wait, for speaking of gambling. I have money, so I don't even know what to say to that. He he won a big bet not long ago. A big bet. He was telling me that. Yeah, yeah. must be nice. I've had a good year. Yeah. North. I, shout out to Mark French again. I took North Texas to beat Purdue in the NCAA tournament. I'm taking the points. Yeah. Sorry. Let's go to the news and social center. Bookit.com. Tomas Romo. What's going on, guys? Starting off, Aggies drop 1-0 nail buyer, number 16, Arkansas. The Aggies playing with five stars out of their li- lineup. Dropped its SEC home opener, 1-0 in overtime, to the number 16 Razorbacks last night at Ellis Field. It's my fault that they lost. I had to leave uh, three quarters of the way through the game. My kids had soccer practice. The boys did, so we stayed for as long as we could. My daughters played at halftime. Really cool. Got some really nice pictures of them playing uh, on the field, so it was great to see that. Thank you to uh, Coach G. Challenge everybody making that happen. What else you got, Tomas? Football faces number 16 Arkansas to open SEC play. Texas A&M owns its 10th season of SEC play on Saturday as the Aggies face number, 10, number 16 Arkansas in the annual Southwest Classic inside AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Kickoff is set for 2.30, and the game will be airing on CBS 
And David, I'm taking A&M with the points. I'd, I'd slam the desk, but I don't want Dalton to get mad at me. Just slam it, bro. He's paying attention to the Ryder Cup. He doesn't care. Good smile there, Tomas. By the way, I, I think it'd be fun, OB, for us to like film our drive. You know, we have some good fireside chats on the way up there. I'm not going to do this. It'd be think, a lot of beep, beep, beep. Right? <laughs> it'd be fun. We had a, I had a good time going with you to Austin and on the way back. We had some good, yeah, good chats. Fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. We're going to head out after the show, a little bit after the show. Mm-hmm. I'm going to maybe partake in a little fitness before we leave and maybe a little lunch. And then I think we're going to head out this afternoon and start our planning and get things done there in the DFW and the Metroplex. Yeah. Um, I probably am not going to. I'm going to be honest. I'm probably not going to do any fitness, but I probably will do lunch. You'll do lunch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just a little fitness. Just get some. See, see you, you, you focus on fitness. I focus on fatness. We all focus on fatness, buddy. That's why I, I mean, focus on fitness. You can go fit a taco in your mouth. I could probably fit three, depending on what kind of tacos they are. I'm really getting uncomfortable with this conversation. If you want to call the I, show. I like tacos. <laughs> 979-693-1150. That is the BCSI hotline. You can also text the AMB text line, 979-693-1150. AMB, a college station branch of the Amarillo National Bank. Good Texas banking. Website, amb.com. We'll get into some picks. I'm taking the points. Next on Texags. You're listening to The Zone. The Zone. Aggie Land's All Sports All Station. Sports station. If you have a debit card, you're used to spending money. But what if your card actually ended up earning you money? That's not exactly normal, but that's what you can get at A&B. It's called Kasasa Cashback Checking. Don't mind the weird name. What you need to know is that it's a free account with cash rewards. Use your debit card for everyday purchases, and we'll pay you cash back every month. If that doesn't sound like normal banking, well, guess what? We're not a normal bank. So contact A&B today and ask for Kasasa or visit A&B.com. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Howdy, y'all. This is Colin Gillespie, former 12th man. I've always tried to help my team on and off the field. And now I'd like to help Texas A&M fans like you cut their electricity bills in half. Yep, in half. It takes less than five minutes and you'll save hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars every year. 90% of Texans overpay for electricity, so don't be one of them. Sign up today at energyogre.com and use code Gilly, G-I-L-L-Y, for a free month of service. Shop local, buy local, save big deals. It's not every day you can save money. Oh, wait, you can. Hi, Jenny here from Big Deals. When you shop Big Deals, you'll save money every day on dozens of gift certificates from local businesses like these. Smitty K's Eminem Apparel, Fajita Peeps, Latino Hand Car Wash. Visit AggielandBigDeals.com to save big. AggielandBigDeals.com. You have the right to know. The right to know about culture. The right to know about the economy. The right to know about technology and to know about sports. You have the right to know about education and politics and the weather. You have the right to know what's happening abroad and in your backyard. But above all else, you have the right to know that this right is under attack and we must work to protect it. Because in order to be free, we must be informed. Understand the threats. ProtectPressFreedom.org. Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max. People don't like the Raiders. You got to remember, that's a polarizing team in general. So no matter what good comes out of there, it's like the Cowboys. It's going to still be bad. People are going to find a reason to feel a certain way. And it's all about the hype. If you don't have the, the Keyshawns behind you pushing the narrative, then other people will set their own agendas to make you think that Carr is worse than what he is. And they go, oh, well, they said that the coach doesn't really like you. John Gruden's never said, ever since he's been there, he didn't like Carr. He never said that. So that was one of those things where people just automatically assume John didn't like Carr, so therefore Carr wasn't any good. So that narrative kept going. So no matter what he would do, he was always behind the eight ball, Jay. Spend your mornings with Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max, powered by WC Tractor. Mornings from 5 to 8 here on The Zone. Hi guys, Tech Sacks Radio, 
We're presented by David Gardner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. Speaking of David Gardner's, if you're in the market for an engagement ring, wedding band, or sack of boy anniversary ring, save the date for David Gardner's ring in season promotion, October the 13th through the 16th. We're going to have an extended selection of diamonds, engagement rings, wedding bands, and more. Don't miss the opportunity to swing by while they have the largest selection of the year at the best prices. You can check out davidgarnersjewelers.com. Click on the engagement tab and scroll down. A programming update. Uh, we're going to have the final countdown at 9 o'clock, not 10 o'clock this week, to uh, fix some schedules to try to make it work. Seth McKinney will be in studio with Billy. Uh, I believe Steve is out for this week, but he did catch up with Billy on the uh, Lucci cast last night. So you can check out that on texags.com. So uh, there we are with that. And uh, we got a couple things to get into this segment. We got to do our, p- you know, I'm such a big gambler guy. You know, this is what I do. Like right now, I'm, I'm just texting my bookie. Let's see what my bookie, yeah, I'm going to take the over there. Do, do, do. Yep, I'm good. I've caught it. I yep. imagine your bookie being the Shreks again. Yeah, Juan, he, he might be. He, he might be my guy. He, he definitely knows somebody. So, hey, we got a couple calls on there. Let's go to the BCSI hotline. First one looks like it's Drew, who wants to talk a little bit about the game. Drew, welcome to Texags Radio, presented by David Garner's Jewelers. Good morning. How are y'all? Well, sir, how are you? Good. Uh, I, I, it's kind of funny when I read the board and I read that people don't think this game's a rivalry and all of that. I can tell how young somebody is when they when I read stuff like that. I know Olin's old enough to know. I'm 48, and this game has given me indigestion since I was about 12. And it's always a tough, tough matchup with Arkansas, and I do not like even the thought of losing to these people. And with that being said, Wattemeyer needs to finally wake up this year. I think this is the perfect game for him to do it. Hey, I appreciate the phone call there. Uh, he had I, a big game last year. He had a huge game. I think he – and I'm actually – I feature him in a little bit on one of our, our segments, but nine, what, 92 yards, two Six, touchdowns. 92, two touchdowns, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was phenomenal last year. I looked at his numbers last week heading into it. His numbers aren't significantly off, but they are off. But you have to also realize he had great chemistry with Kellen Mann trying to develop that with, with Zach Calzada. Uh, and we talked about there's been some times when he's been open and the ball just didn't get to him. Yep. So, um, But he's, he had a, a drop last week, too. He did. So um, he can play better, and they can do a better job getting him the ball. Let's go to one more caller, Antonio, joining us here on Texax Radio. Antonio, how are you, sir? Hey, buenos dias. How you doing? <laughs> hey, how how'd you doing? Doing great. Listen, hey. First of all, is Mike Elko the best coordinator on the sidelines of college football or what? He, he, in my mind, he is. And we've got to make sure we keep that guy at least three more seasons. It's going to be <laughs> tough. But there is, the question, the reason for my call is I'm concerned with this game. I'm concerned with the play calling uh, so far in the season. I think, and I want to get your perspective on this, this is going to be the best our offensive line plays all season long. Well, my goodness, can we please throw the ball to the running back in the flat? Can we get the ball to Weathermaker uh, more than three or four times in a game? Can we target him a little bit more? And finally, I want to say that I wish I was going to be in Arlington with you guys because I want to hear the air raid sirens that are going to be going off when all of the Cuban missiles are flying over their targets and landing with all of our receivers. We talk about we've got the greatest receiving core in college football. I agree with that 100%. What do you think? Antonio, I think you should call every Friday. I love your optimism. The Cuban Missile uh, Crisis there with our our good friend Zach Calzado, which we haven't made enough about, you know, Cuban family here. I love – I'm I'm, I'm on Team Zach, baby. Uh, You know, all I want to say is I'm going to ask you, what's the the main ingredient of a Cuban sandwich? Well – uh, let's let's ask Antonio. I think it's the pork. What do you uh, think, uh, Antonio? It's puerco. Claro que sí. Claro que sí. And who are they playing? Pork. That's right. They're playing so the, the, the hogs out there. The Cuban. So, so it, it is a recipe. He he did bring up a great <laughs> point though. Getting the running backs the balls it the ball. Excuse me. In in certain areas of space, I'd love to see what A chain can do against that defense with a little space. Oh, and and Spiller's got to have to open that up with the offensive line really blocking. Well, you know, um, I think that that they did against Colorado. I personally thought they threw too much. Yeah, I did too. I, uh, I thought they abandoned the run too fast. But I do want to see the ball in A-Chain's hand as much as possible. 
Uh, you got to run Spiller. He's playing so great. Throw it to him. Uh, but uh, let's see how creative Jimbo gets. Antonio, man, anything else for us, buddy? No, thank you, Giggle. Giggle. I agree with him, though. I think the offensive line will play its best game. Yeah. I. Uh, no matter who's they, out there. They have to. Well, that's part of it. That's part of it. But, again, it's just been my experience. I've seen it over and over. When you've had a bad game and you just keep being told how bad you are and then the focus of practice is all about you, I've seen if you have talent, they typically respond. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell you this. I uh, I believe that beyond the talent, the coaching is at a different level. I, I think Sam Pittman's doing a phenomenal job, overachieving with his roster, doing a really good job. He's got some super seniors helping out. But Jimbo freaking Fisher gets paid for, for these kind of games, right? And I do believe he will have his team as ready as possible. Look, there is some youth and inexperience that you're just going to have to go through these battles to get. And maybe on the other side of this, a couple weeks from now, will it be even better? But the fact that they've had three weeks against some inferior opponents where they have been, they've won all three games and haven't looked good for the most part. And they didn't look good in a 34 0 victory. That just tells you how good they can be. Yeah. Oh, but the last thing about Antonio's call. Uh, I'm all, I'm with you about we need uh, Mike Elko to be here for at least three more years, yes. but, I, but but just don't count on it. Does, I mean, I saw on the boards the other day if uh, if people thought, does he want to be a head coach? I can't answer that for him. He, he's been happy staying here. Uh, most people want to be a head coach. That's why they get into it. But some people love being a coordinator. We've seen it too with Venables, right? Uh, yeah, even though I think he wants to be a head coach, I think he finally just gave up. Uh, I think Bud Carson, not Bud Carson, Bud Foster wanted to replace Frank Beamer, but was content to stay there. He spent his whole life there. Um, look, he probably he probably wants to be a head coach when the job and the time is both right. And I think that's pro that job is probably like if USC was called Mike Elko. Do you turn that down? Maybe you do if you have kids and you're worried about. You know, you would rather them get through high school here, but I don't know if that's the case. So, so again, I, I believe that it, depending on where you are in life is how you answer that question, right? Mm -hmm. So if KABC called me, again, I think that's the LA ABC affiliate two years ago, I wouldn't have jumped for that opportunity. I like living in Texas. I like this quality of life. I like the level that I'm at. Uh, that's me. Some people, first opportunity to bolt, they go for that next step. They like that, that climb. There was a time in my career that I liked the climb. There's a time that I like the quality of life that we have here in, in College Station. So I think you can apply that to people. We, I don't know Mike in, on that level. Yeah. That day will come. And if he can be a head coach, go for it. But I'd like to see him stay until they win uh, a national uh, championship. We are. I think, I think he could, if he wanted to, he could probably stay here forever and be revered. But, you know, maybe he'll go somewhere else and be revered. I know that Jim Grobe won a – uh, a conference championship at Wake Forest yeah, I remember back that. in like 06 or 07 yeah. and was offered jobs. He, he opted to stay at Wake Forest because he was happy there. A few years later, he got fired. Yeah, that's, that's the way it works. Yeah. But if, if you're happy, do you, so I, I use this example sometimes. Had Tom Herman stayed at the University of Houston, and the only reason I bring it up is because I covered him, they would have maybe built a statue for the right. guy, right? Like he was that, there are certain places that if you go and you stay, it is all about you mm -hmm. you go billy Clyde gillespie and go to kentucky sometimes it's not all about you it's about the history that has been done down there we went down several paths this segment when we come back <laughs> book it i'm taking the points on tech radio we got to do a couple of things before that like uh our, our friend antonio who called the show earlier and drew i'm sure they got parents and and, and family that they uh just love and they, they just want to take advantage of those stories while they've got grandparents here in town that's why you call Heritage Films, right? Chance McLean, my good friend, dear friend, really, uh, does such excellent work. He is artistic. He is creative. He does radio stations. He's done that. Broadway musicals. He has started 1560, the game where I started my uh, radio career. He's done so many different things, and now he's doing Heritage Films, which is to tell your story, right? Your story, your father's story, your boss's story. He does it so, so well, and it's like a Netflix documentary about your life. Let that sink in for a second. Like, I, like, when I brought it up to my dad, he's like, I don't think I want, you know, I don't need the glitz and the glamour and this. And, no, 
It is a documentary about your life, but it's for your family. It's for everybody else, guys, right? So there are stories that need to be captured and told and passed down. You don't want to play a game of telephone because then the story changes, right? And that's what Chance McLean does so well. He'll go, he'll light the room, he'll do the interview. It'll take him about eight to ten weeks. So it's, it's not a slow process, but he is just a good old boy who loves telling stories. Check it out at yourheritagefilm.com. Yourheritagefilm.com. 713-893-8341. 713-893-8341. I'm Tulsi Reber with your community calendar on The Zone. This week, for every cookie sold at any Blue Baker location, $1 will be donated to Hurricane Ida Relief Funds. The Brazos Valley Beekeepers Association invites you to their one-day bee school this Saturday. Visit bvbeaks.org for more information. College Station Noon Lions Club invites you to Miracle in the Park. This free family event at Wolfpin Creek Park is Saturday from 5 to 10 p.m. Starting October 1st, sip your way around the Brazos Valley with Coffee Crawl, benefiting the Children's Museum of the Brazos Valley. Get free coffee from your favorite local shops. Buy your Coffee Crawl tickets online at cmbv.org. For more information about becoming a master gardener, visit brazosmg.com. Your home for the NFL with Sunday, Monday, and Thursday night NFL from Westwood One is Sports Radio 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Listen in from the first week to the Super Bowl on Aggieland's Home for Sports. I'm Tulsi Reber on The Zone. Wolf Cleaning Services of Aggieland reminds all listeners that last year over 50% of our children were bullied or teased. This daily ritual leaves them in despair, feeling like there's no way out. Be someone that a child can go to for help and let's stop the intimidation now. This message is from Priscilla and the crew at Wolf Cleaning Services of Aggieland. Equipped to handle all your home and office cleaning needs. They don't cut corners, they clean them. Call 979-618-1019. Wolf Cleaning Services of Aggieland. Wishing our kids a happy and healthy school year. Verabank is open and we are excited to serve you in College Station. Hi, this is Erica Archer, Treasury Management Officer at Verabank, and I specialize in helping businesses run their day-to-day operations more efficiently, saving you valuable time. Our team's job is to make yours easier. So give us a call or come by and see us off of Highway 6. At Verabank, you have a team of genuine bankers on your side, and you can bank on it. Visit verabank.com today. That's V-E-R-A bank.com. Verabank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The flagship station for Aggie Athletics is The Zone. Whenever the Aggies are playing, you can hear them right here at 1150 and 93.7 FM. Thanks to our listeners and our Aggie broadcast sponsors, Schulte Roofing, Prosperity Bank, Hargrove Insurance, and Rudy's Barbecue. Here's a big gigum to all these sponsors. Listen to Aggie Athletics on The Zone 1150 and 93.7 FM. Head coach Jimbo Fisher and the Aggies are ready to rise to the top of the SEC. Zach steps up, going deep, wide open, Davis! Touchdown, Aggies! Join us Saturday. The Aggies play the Arkansas Razorbacks at AT AT&T Stadium. Our coverage begins at 1.30 on your home for Aggies football. The Texas A&M Sports Network. Listen to Aggie football on 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Online at RadioAggieland.com. Four. Four. Tell your smart speaker to play Sony 1150. It is Texas Radio. We're presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. We're still here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. We're having a good old time. We appreciate the uh, phone calls on the BCSI hotline and, of course, on the A&B text line. We see you guys. We'll try to get to you here in a moment. But now it is time for pick six. I'm taking the points. God, what a loser. I'd really. Like, Maybe not. Maybe if you take the points, you'll win. Well, no, I'm just saying <laughs> my verbiage was way, way off. Let's, uh, let's start it off with our pick six. Number seven, Texas A&M. They're three and zero. They're taking on number sixteen, Arkansas. They're also three and zero. Two thirty at AT and T Stadium in Arlington. A and M is favored by five and a half. You know, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take A and M because it just seems to me that that too many people are just dismissing A and M. I know they haven't played well, but um, I think you're going to see a team that's again been told. Keeps hearing that they're not that good. Uh, an offensive line that's been told that they're 
that that they're that they suck. Right. And you're going to see a team, I think, come back and show that they just have more talent. And, and I'm not saying they're going to blow Arkansas out, uh, but I should say blow out Arkansas. But um, I do think they're going to go out and, and win the game, and I think they'll win by a touchdown. I hope so. Uh, I'm taking Arkansas, but a and going to win the game. Just because of the way this history has gone, mm-hmm. because I do have questions about A&M, and because I think Arkansas has improved, and every year it's – not every year, but most of the years the last decade have been – games that you're like what is happening in this game it's true because of that not that history really means anything to t- today but i do believe now i will give this to a m they have that same defense that they had last year for the most part yes but he's not there they're, they're minor changes but uh no i i've got a and m taking uh, excuse me arkansas taking the points but a and m winning this to do now uh lsu at mississippi state 11 o'clock davis wade stadium lsu is favored by two and a half OB? Yeah, you know, I'm still taking LSU, and I'll give, you know, to win by a field goal or more. Um, I know LSU's not playing well, but the fact of the matter is Mississippi State, I'd see a team that lost to Memphis. I know there was some controversy. A team that escaped Louisiana Tech. I have to believe that LSU is is still better than Mississippi State, regardless of what happened last year. I'm exactly like you. I'm saying I'm taking LSU with the points. I think LSU has their, those brain, fro- brain fog moments, no doubt, but I do think they sometimes figure it out. Last year, they figured it out towards the end, and uh, I think they're still going to have some issues this year, but I'm going with LSU in this one. Tennessee, 2-1, and one, taking on number 11, 2-1, Florida. This game is at the Swamp. Florida is favored by 19.5. I have changed my mind a couple different times on this game, OB. I don't want to be a prisoner of the moment. I'll hold my thoughts. Let's start with you. Well, the only pause I have is because I wonder if Florida is going to be flat after playing uh, Alabama and almost beating them. Or you could say, well, that tells me Florida's really good. I know Tennessee's bad. They're bad. Yep. So I am going to take Florida at home to win by 20 points. Yep. I was going that direction. But young Tomas Romo, I don't know why I say his name with an accent, Tomas Romo, he, uh, he kind of talked me out of it. It's a big number. It's a big number, Dave. And I think it is a big number because I think we've seen more bad from Florida than we've seen good from Florida. Uh, they what had a good great have we seen from Tennessee? Nothing. Nothing. But I just, I, I just think 20 is a big number. 19 and a half is a big number. So I'm going to say Tennessee. Florida's okay. going to win, but I'm, I'm, I'm taking Tennessee there. SMU, the fourth game, 3 and 0. Oh, uh, at TSU, 11 a.m. TCU. Sir, what did I say? TSU. Oh, it's because I, I used to cover them. I feel like they're in the, my, my mind. They're at uh, Carter Stadium, FS1. TCU is favored by nine and a half. You know, I'm going to take SMU in those nine and a half points. Oh, you and I are all over the place. Today. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm taking TCU. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, we're going against each other here. I, I, I should follow you. No, uh, although we, last week we were opposite, but we did very well. I think you did four and two. Was, I did four and yeah. two after my uh, disastrous start. Number five, we've got uh, this one. I'm, I'm, we're probably going to be on the same page. Number 12, Notre Dame, 3-0, and versus number 18, Wisconsin, 1-1. One and one. Soldier Field in Chi-Town. Fox broadcast, Wisconsin favored by 5.5. Actually, to me, that's a tough call. Um, I will take Notre Dame in the points. I'm taking Wisconsin. I'm taking the points for Wisconsin because I think they are significantly better than what I've seen from Notre Dame. No, Notre Dame has not been impressive. No, and Notre Dame. But I get points. Yeah. Notre Dame can't run the ball. Wisconsin's great at stopping the run. I, mean, I guess it doesn't matter if they're good at stopping the run if Notre Dame can't run on anybody, but I, I think Wisconsin's significantly better. Okay. And the sixth one, Nebraska. <laughs> Terrible. Versus number 20, Michigan State, who showed some life last week, 3-0. and 1-0 in the Big Ten. Six o'clock start, Spartan Stadium, FS1. Michigan State. Favored by four and a half. Oh, Michigan State all day. All day, buddy. We're same page there. I think I think Nebraska put it all into uh, Oklahoma last week, and then they lose a game like that, and how they go on the road. I don't know how good they are against, in stopping the run. Michigan State at home runs really well. Yeah, I'll take Michigan State all day long. Yeah. Now let's go to the BCSI hotline. Adam wants to talk a little Mike Elko. Adam, welcome to Texas Radio. Howdy, gentlemen. How we doing? Howdy. 
So, uh, so you're talking about betting lines. I took the Aggies to cover. I took the under. And, of course, I took the money line for a to win as well. So I got full confidence in Mike Elko and our defense. I think Jimbo slows the pace of the game down. Our O-line establishes themselves this week. And we grind out probably a 10-point, 12-point victory. Well, I like the way you're thinking. Now, uh, it sounds like you have a lot of confidence. Do you have like – do you have like three digit confidence? Uh four digit confidence or is that two digit confidence? Meaning how much did you what bet? You oh yeah. <laughs> I was I was trying to do the math. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, okay. Uh well combined it's three digits. Uh this the three individual bets I put. Okay. They wouldn't let me parlay it. So but I put three, you know, smaller amounts that amounted to three digit bet. <laughs> All right. But, I like the way you're thinking. But I, 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 really, I really think that this defensive line is going to dominate whether those two offensive linemen are out or not. I think Elko has been saving some stuff in his back pocket just for SEC play. Because we didn't see a lot of the blitz packages against Colorado. We sure as heck didn't see it against New Mexico. And we're going to see a lot more probably linebacker and defensive line stunts. And uh, a, a poster on Texas broke down a couple of the uh, – the counter trays on YouTube and our offensive line is literally missing one or two blocks and we're springing 20, 30 yard runs almost every time. So I think those are things that are fixable. They'll get them fixed this week and we get the streak to 10. Gosh, I hope so. I hope so. Thanks so much for the phone call, Adam. And I don't even remember if I said the, what the uh, topic of the day is that I apologize if I didn't, we just started off with my, my headline or excuse me, my uh, gambling rant. The headline is, what's the headline going to be after the A&M Arkansas game? You know, Antonio had some, some thoughts there. You had some as well. So that is something we're going to be uh, trying to figure out. But OB, as you think about the headline for the game afterwards, okay? The afterwards, whatever you think it's going to be. I want to ask you, who's the most important player in this game? And it could be an A&M player. It could be an Arkansas player. Who's the most important player? I hate to take the low-hanging fruit, but it's Zach Galzada. Is it? In my mind, I mean, um, you know, he's if if he plays well, um, takes care of the ball, uh, you know, doesn't take the sacks uh, when he can get rid of the ball, you know, uh, I, then I think uh, I think that'll go a long way in a And M winning. It's you know, almost any game you can pick the quarterback, and I, and I know I, it's why, and, and, but it's okay because I think in this game. I think the most important player is K.J. Jefferson. And I say that because if he doesn't go off, Arkansas is not going to go off. If you force him to be a pocket passer, I think the A&M defense is going to have a couple picks. Um, you, you load the box. You confuse him. I think Mike Elko is a master at confusing opposing quarterbacks. We just keep hearing about the other side. Like, oh, they're so good. You know, yeah, they're good. I get it. Yeah, he's really good. good. Yeah, yeah, he's really good. But I think Mike Elko is and that on that same level or above, to be honest with you. And the talent is above at AM. So all that that recipe, I believe you can keep KJ Jefferson in check. You keep Arkansas in check. And I think AM comes away with the with the victory. If you can limit what he does, because he's the one that I think can beat you because of his legs. And we've seen early on in the season what quarterbacks running can do to AM. But last week, Terry Wilson didn't do anything. Nope, and in the second half, uh, Colorado, Brandon do Lewis or whatever his name was didn't do anything. Uh, the Kent State game, there were the first half, you know, they gashed a little bit. A and M, and and A and M has given up some yards on on the ground uh, at times, but overall, they they know how to, when they need to suffocate an offense, they know how to do it. And Arkansas is going to get theirs, but are they going to get it consistently? And that's right. which which offense is more likely to produce consistently against the other defense, and that's. I, th- I think the, the offense is more likely to consistently produce against the other defenses, A&M's. So do you have a headline for Sunday morning, Saturday night, post-game? What is your headline? OB? How about because I think the offense – I mean, I've been saying the offense line is going to be better, it's gonna, and I believe that. How about uh, maroon goons make swine swoon? I like that. See, yeah. See, I could tell you've gotten paid for this kind of stuff in your life. 
I thought I was being, you know, I put it on the message boards, by the way. I thought I was being kind of headliney, and I'm not after listening to you. Swine dining. The Aggies make it a perfect 10 against Arkansas. Oh, I like the perfect 10. Perfect 10, baby. I think they're going to go for that perfect 10 and, and blow it up. If you want to be a part of that conversation, you can. Uh, on the a and text line, 979-693-1150 is the number to get in on that. You can call the show as well, 979-693-1150. Uh, we also need to, in a little bit, bank on our OB. So I want you to start jogging your memory or your mind, I should say, to how we're going to bank on, on this game. Because I've said it all week long. I do believe at the end of the game, at the end of the game, we're going to know both teams. a and is still going to improve as the season goes on. Arkansas can possibly improve. But we're going to find out if Arkansas is a legit top 15, top 10 team, as their fans have us thinking. And we're going to find out if A&M, when they need to block and run the ball, which was their DNA last year, if they can do it this year. Hmm. Hmm. We're going to find out. We are going to find out. I also want to ask you, go ahead. I sure hope Leighton Robinson's in there. I hope so. I, I think it makes a big difference. I think it does. I, and look, I'd, I'd love to see Luke Matthews out there. I'm not saying starting. I'm just saying having the, the quality depth, get those guys back out there. And not that I wish for people to be injured or anything, but if Arkansas is struggling on the offensive line, if a guy or two has to miss, sorry. We've kind of dealt with it ourselves yeah. here. You know, it's just part of playing big boy uh, football. Right now, though, you know, I, I've told you guys about Caldwell Country and the difference being real. Now I know. I mean, I've, I've known, but like I, now I've really known. I'm having a meeting yesterday with Logan and the guys. Uh, Thad's involved. I think Dalton makes a couple appearances. Richard's in there. And my car battery or something's up with the car. In fact, they just called me during the break there. I need to call Caldwell Country. But I'm trying to get my battery changed or looked at or see if there's something else going on. Is it the starter? What is it? Call a couple places. Got to pick up the kids. Got to call a couple places. And, and everything is full. Like, I don't know if we can get to you till Saturday. Call my boy Zach Hester up. Boom. Takes care of me. Just like that. Instantly. There's no waiting. Like, that's just. And it's not because we're buddies. I think being a buddy is a, a, a great thing. He just takes care of his people, right? You go to Caldwell Country, you're going to experience that difference. I experienced it just yesterday. I'm experiencing it right now. They have the best customer service, and that I can guarantee. Call other places. They don't do what Zach Hester and the fellows there at Caldwell Country Chevrolet do. They are so good at what they do. They give you the best prices. But again, it is about trust and experience. Both of those, I can guarantee you, Caldwell Country Chevrolet. Wherever you are, state of Texas, that's who you need to go see. And if you're in Bryan, guess what? Not that far. 15-minute drive. Brian to Caldwell. Just a short conversation away. But you'll see the difference when you start stepping on the lot. You don't even have to step on the lot. Just call them. They're going to take care of you. Check out their website as well. It's Caldwell Country Chevrolet. Highway 21 in Caldwell and online. CaldwellCountryChevrolet.com. This is the Zone. The Zone. Aggieland's All Sports Station. Question. Would you pick a chain barbecue place over a hometown joint? Do you root for East Coast universities instead of the local team? Nah, then why choose a big Wall Street bank? A&B started in 1892. Five generations later, we're still owned and operated by the same Texas family. We support this community. We value your privacy. We make quick decisions, and we hate red tape. We answer to you, not Wall Street. Bank with A&B. Family owned, Texas proud. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Save Our Streets Ministries is celebrating its 20th annual banquet rise on Tuesday, October 5th at 6.30. Sponsored by Galleria Spa Salon Boutique and KBTX Media. SOS has invested in lives to rescue, restore, and release families from drug and gang-infested environments where abuse, poverty, and violence are a way of life. We are in our critical hour, but our finest hour. I just don't want to read about great exploits. I want to be one. Church of the Living God, it's time for us to rise. Visit SaveOurStreetsMinistries.org slash rise and help us save our streets. Brian Broadcasting is your home for high school football. Brian High, A&M Consolidated, Rudder, and College Station High play on the Brian Broadcasting family of stations. No matter where you are, hear every play, every game, all season long. Thanks to Prosperity Bank, Kelly Burt Dozer, Zwerneman Flooring, and BCS Toyota. To find out when and where to hear your favorite team, go to BrazosFootball.com. He was the heart of your family, and he taught you our history. He helped you fix your first flat. He was the best backyard DJ around, and every time he'd tell a story, he'd own the room. But now more than ever, he may feel alone. 
Today, older adults and their loved ones are struggling to connect in a time when connection has never been more important. But there is something we can do. Embrace our older loved ones through StoryCorps Connect. With StoryCorps Connect, you can honor seniors remotely with an interview about their life. Every interview will be archived at the Library of Congress, becoming part of American history, so that years from now, future generations can listen in. All right, Grandpa, what's one piece of advice you have for me? Just three words, sweetheart. Live with courage. The man that had the best stories still has plenty of stories to tell. So connect virtually and share the conversation of a lifetime at StoryCorpConnect.org slash AARP. Connect, honor, share. StoryCorps Connect. A message from AARP, StoryCorps, and the Ad Council. You can hear every Aggie football game, home, road, national championship, right here on Sports Radio 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Game Day on the Zone is brought to you in part by Stephen Gostaitis, attorney at law, BCS, Allstate agent Jerry Anderson, and Higginbotham Insurance. 30 minutes after every A&M home game, tune in for the Twin Peaks call-in show powered by TexAgs.com. Greetings. Salutations this Friday morning. Love the breeze out there. It is Texags Radio. We are presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. We're here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. And it is now time for Bank on It, presented by Vera Bank. Apologize if I made your speakers pop there. Authentic relationship-based banking built for real life. Go see our friend Joel Jackson and the team. Learn more at verabank.com. Mr. Olin Buchanan, what can we bank on? You know, I'm banking on uh, Demas going two for two on, on deep touchdowns. I think right. you're going to see an Arkansas team overplaying the run, uh, leaving their corners one-on-one at times. You're going to catch them, play action. Demas going deep. He's better than their corners. Uh, I think you'll see it again. I love that. It brought a smile to my face. Getting Demas involved more often does bring a smile to my face. You know what I'm banking on? What? People have been hating on my dude, J.W., Jalen Watermeyer. And he's he's quietly having a season, four catches a game. Uh, he's been so quiet so far, but this weekend is when he breaks out. He's going to come through. Last year we talked about in the open, six catches, 92 yards, two touchdowns. Something similar is going to happen this weekend because of the way Arkansas is going to play. Zach's going to have to find, and you know I could see Jalen holding up for a block for a second, releasing, being open, dump, forget about it. He's going to be targeted. I think he was targeted eight times last week. He'll be targeted roughly the same or more, but he's going to capitalize on it, and you're going to see some big – and they can't tackle him. That's a fact. See, I think what Weidemeyer's um, success last year is another reason why Demas will have a – Because they're going to the, key on on him? The, you, you've got to – you know, you've had it happen to you. You've right. got to be aware of that. I think there's going to be a, a lot of uh, – and who's going to, who's going to uh, cover the, 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 uh, the tight end? A safety, yep. right? Because you're not going to put – so, so I think there's going to be some opportunities for some deep balls. You know what would be nice? What? Both things happen. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to be picky or, you know, pick too many things. But, like, I think that would be – I think it's about – it is about time to see that offensive line dominate. Or if Kinda not – Kind of dominate. Or if not, call some passes that we get rid of the ball pretty quick. Yeah. And, and I just – I don't want to abandon the run if it's not working. Now I don't want to stick to it every single play, but you've you've got you've you've got to run the ball to win in the SEC. I know you got to pass, I get it, but or get the ball out on little swing passes to A Chain and Spiller. Yep, exactly. Let's I go. mean, you have so many weapons, you just got to get the ball in their hands. Just find a way to get it to your playmakers. Let's go. Oh my goodness. Let's go to the news and social center. Damas, what's going on, guys? Uh, Texas Cito says. A&M is a matchup nightmare, and we win 28-10 to 10 with two tight ends on the O-line. The A-train will sprint for 200 yards. I would really enjoy an 18-point victory that is not in doubt in the fourth quarter. That would be nice. I would like to see A&M start fast for a change. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, last year they did, but, I mean, up in Arlington, so many times they get behind. I heard the Arkansas, some Arkansas fans whining about officiating. You know, they're still mad about um, – Dan Skipper getting called for a trip, and I always just say, "Hey, you remember this ninety-yard touchdown run yeah. that got called a ten-yard, you know, eighty yards?" And they said that Kellen Mond stepped out of bounds, and he didn't. You know, it's not like the officiating has uh, has been one way. You know, you whiny asses. Whiny, that word. Next, Tomas. 
Matt and San Antonio, after ne never letting up the gas pedal versus the Longhorns two weeks ago, Arkansas hit the brakes against A&M's defense, which held them to 10 points in a 31-10 to win. And David, I'm the man of the people. The people are saying A&M's going to blow out Arkansas. Bank on it. He's banking on it. Define blowout. Yeah. yeah win yeah. by at least, at least 10. More than That's 10. That's not a blowout. More than 10. I'll take it. That's, That's more than a, a touchdown. If the spread's five, I double the spread. Hold Boom. on. I need a ruling on this. Let me talk to an adult here. Thomas, hold on for this. It's a blowout 10 point victory. More than 10. Um, Blowout's 21 minimum. Well, I think it, it kind of depends on, like, for instance, Arkansas. Did Arkansas blow out Rice? It was a 17 point victory, but they kicked the field it was it was a touchdown game until the last four minutes all right we got to drop it there I'm, I'm upset with the world now it is tex ags radio presented by david garner's jewelers the final countdown at 9 a.m this week we'll have that next with seth and billy here on tex ags hey joe i thought you were retired <laughs> living on a fixed income is tough so here i am an essential worker i know i mean food prices are going up every day Thank goodness for BenefitsCheckup.org. Benefits what? BenefitsCheckup.org. It's a free website where people over 60 can find help to pay for food, medicine, even utilities. I got $1,200 a year in benefits. Maybe it can help you. My name is Bobby. I'm a veteran and lost my leg to a roadside bomb. My victory was going from a wheelchair to becoming a weightlifting champion. I'm Sam. I'm a veteran. My victory was finding a career I can be proud of and supporting my family. America's veterans are on their most important tour, the tour of their lives. I'm a veteran. My victory was going from homeless to home. At DAV, we're on a mission to help veterans get the benefits they've earned. I'm a veteran, and my victory was finishing my education. DAV offers veterans of all generations a lifetime of support for victories great and small. My victory was proving that a disability is not a limitation. My victory was getting my service dog and new best friend. We help more than a million veterans every year as they face and conquer their challenges. My victory is being able to be there for my family. When America's veterans win, we all win. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Like us on Facebook at Zone Eleven Fifty. Follow us on Twitter at Zone Eleven Fifty. Get connected now. Get connected now. Now with the Zone Eleven Fifty AM and ninety three point seven FM. This is KZNE College Station. Brian. WTAW, I'm Chelsea Reber with a news update on The Zone. In less than six weeks, construction is scheduled to start on widening Rock Prairie Road from Welburn to Holloman. That's after the College Station City Council approved a nearly $5 million contract last night. Project manager Jason Smith says the design allows Union Pacific Railroad to expand. In our design, they have asked us to make space for a second track to the west, 20 foot off center of the existing track. So basically allowing grading to be flat, no obstacles in that area, so that if they came through with the second track, that there would be minimal changes to the existing roadway. Smith says the contractor will start at Welburn and work their way west on what will be a three-lane concrete road with bike lanes and sidewalks. This week's Blinn College trustees meeting included an update on fall enrollment with 27% of fall classes not starting yet because they are four, eight, and 12-week courses. Total headcount is down by 107 students. Blinn's headcount at Bryan is down more than 600 from last fall, while Rellis has the same headcount. The number of students taking online classes is up and headcount is down among high school students and at the Brenham, Seeley, and Schulenburg campuses. In March of 2019, a Bryan man was shot in the chest while sitting inside his car. This week in Brazos County District Court, the district attorney's office reached a plea agreement with the man who admitted to murder. 31-year-old Cameron Crumry of Bryan was sentenced to 50 years for the shooting that a witness said followed Crumry taking his wallet at gunpoint. Crumry has been in jail since five days after the shooting. 
An Austin man admits to burglarizing his grandparents' home in Bryan more than two years ago. As part of a plea agreement with the Brazos County District Attorney's Office, 34-year-old James Molman also pleaded guilty to assaulting his grandfather. Molman was given a 10-year prison sentence, but he is eligible to get out in six months and go on probation for 10 years. For more news, go online to WTAW.com. I'm Chelsea Reber on The Zone. Please join Pink Alliance Thursday, September 30th for their 18th annual Surviving and Thriving Cancer Awareness Luncheon, sponsored by St. Joseph Health. Featuring Lori Allen, breast cancer survivor and reality star of Say Yes to the Dress Atlanta. Come hear Lori tell her story as we raise money to support breast cancer patients in the Brazos Valley. For tickets or more information, visit survivingandthriving.org. That's survivingandthriving.org. Are you looking for a job? Join the Bryan College Station Chamber of Commerce and Workforce Solutions Brazos Valley for the Chamber's annual job fair on October the 5th from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Brazos Center. Visit with companies hiring right here in Bryan College Station. For more information, visit bcschamber.org or call 979-260-5200. That's 979-260-5200. Once again, the Chamber's job fair is on October the 5th. Good morning, sports fans. I'm Zach Taylor with your Aggie Sports Minute on The Zone. This Sports Minute is brought to you by Hill Meadow Roofing and Supply. Call 936-825-0500 or click hillcosupply.com. Number 7, Texas A&M Football is gearing up to take on 16th-ranked Arkansas tomorrow in Arlington. Aggie headman Jimbo Fisher expects yet another dogfight. We've had some battles on some teams they've had. <laughs> there have been some great games up there all come down the wires. So they've all been very tough, in my opinion. I think I think this game's a rivalry game, and they, they do a great job of getting up for it, and they play very hard in it. But this team is playing very well. Their team is very talented. Their team is very v- seasoned. I mean, very seasoned. And, and, and their players and their coach very well, and they're playing very well. And, it, and I'm going to say, we're definitely going to have our hands full. We're going to have to play a great football game. There's no doubt. They're number 16 for a reason. And the Aggies enter the matchup with a nine-game win streak against the Razorbacks. Kickoff is tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. at AT&T Stadium. Broadcast will be right here on The Zone. Aggie women's soccer couldn't get past number 16 Arkansas last night, 1-0. Things were scoreless up until the 96th minute when the Ladybacks found the net on a header. With the loss, the Maroon and White fall to 5-4-1 overall and 1-1 and in SEC play. And men's and women's cross country host the Texas A&M Invitational tomorrow morning at the Dell Watts Cross Country Course. Competition begins at 8 a.m. And that's been your Aggie Sports Minute brought to you by Hillco Meadow Roofing and Supply. On The Zone, I'm Zach Taylor. The Bellucci Hour Happy Hour is a must part of any Aggie football season. Join Billy Lucci of Tex Ags and Zach Taylor, the Infomaniac, every Monday and Thursday at 6 at the tap. Or listen in right here on Sports Radio 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. The Bellucci Hour Happy Hour every Monday, Thursday at 6 is brought to you by King Ranch Saddle Shop. Also brought to you in part by B&B Automotive. It's the Bellucci Hour Happy Hour. It is Texas Ags Radio. We're presented by David Garner of Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. It's time for the final countdown. Seth McKinney is in the house. How are you, Seth? I'm great, man. How you doing? I'm good, man. You're always early. I am, but Billy is never early, so. But you know he, what? I'm trying to even it out, you know, equal out the, the lateness with the earliness. But Billy's always, he's working the phones, working sources, sure. so we, we, sure. we, we can deal with that. So I'm glad that you and I had a t- discussion before the segment to, to tell our young intern here, Tomas, <laughs> what a blowout is. What would, when I asked you, you didn't know anything. You didn't hear That's that right. segment, right? When I, I asked didn't. you. What is the minimum for a blowout? You the said minimum. I said was twenty points. That's a that's a, if you get tw- if you beat somebody by twenty, I would say that's a blowout. And I made the comment it was like you know, and someone was talking about ten, and I was like, you know, if we beat New Mexico by ten, I mean that's not a blowout. If right. we beat Arkansas by ten, I'll take it, but that's not a blowout. If we beat them by twenty. I mean that's a blowout. Yes. Yeah, so. yeah, you've got. I I, I said twenty twenty one points. Uh, Kelly on the AMB text line. I think he said at least eighteen. I. I, I I think 18, I'd be, and I guess. I'd be happy with it. I don't know if I'd call it blowout. Maybe I would. Who knows? 18 against Alabama? 
Oh, that's a blowout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ten against Bama, maybe even one. So, so how? So we were on a text message thread with Billy the other day, and you know, I'm kind of a I don't want to say a pessimist, but I worry about things. But I'm feeling I'm feeling much better about this game. How are you feeling a day before Jerry's World? I feel good about it. I mean, look, I know what the and I was just talking about it with Olin here at the break and. And I know what the, the New Mexico defense threw at these guys on the offensive line. I'm not saying that that makes up for their lack of performance and all that stuff. But I, I feel for those guys, and I, I know exactly what they went through because I've faced that defense a handful of times. And the confusion that's out there is incredible. So, moving forward, I think that Arkansas is going to be a great challenge for us, but I feel – really good about it I'm not all and I said this last year right it's I remember sitting at this desk last year and listening to those two you know wet blankets over there <laughs> talking about oh it's gonna be so close I just don't feel, I was like man we're gonna go out there and we're gonna beat Arkansas handling I can't remember the score but I don't remember it being just a close game unless I'm you know losing my mind but I don't think this is gonna be some kind of blowout I think we're gonna come out of here a winner and I think our offensive line is going to make up for what they did last week. And the reason I'm speaking so much about them specifically is because they were the, you know, the obviously everyone realized that that was the issue on either side of the ball. The offensive line was a glaring issue last week. And I think it was because of the defense that they were presented with. And I think that they're going to come out this week and play a lot better. Plus the injuries. I think that the lineup wasn't ideal last week and, I think things are going to be drastically different up front. So I think the outcome is going to be a lot more positive in my eyes. Obi was asking you at the break about, you know, when an offensive line is told all week that they haven't reached that level that they need to reach, what is going through their mind and how they are attacking practice if they're told all week long they're not as where they need to be? Yeah, so the offensive line, we get no love over there individually. Uh, as a unit, you you get love sometimes, but – Odds are if you only get noticed on bad occasions, right? That's kind of had the offensive lineman's life. But 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 we love it and we take the the when that when a running back gets their hundred yards and when a you know another running back gets a hundred yards or or the quarterback doesn't get touched all game, you take pride in that. But them getting talked about in the media, I mean, I know that 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 they realize this and I know it's been hammered to them all week that look. And I'm sure Henson's over there telling them, look, y'all didn't play good last week. And they didn't. But, you know, the defense is, a, is dip more – it's different this week. You're not going to be mentally challenged like you were last week with it. This is going to be a physical challenge. And I think that those guys are going to go out there and they're going to play tr uh, a, a ton better than what they did last week. I just fully believe it. All right, let's I'm do oh, – go ahead. I have to believe that when I see it. Well, I agree with you. Kind of like that's you how versus I feel. McNeese back in 07. <laughs> I always bring that up. He so. loves bringing that up. <laughs> My goodness. No, but I will say, Seth, in 98, you guys weren't young, though. That's the difference. But 98, you guys were not dominating people at the very beginning of the season. You went up to Kansas. It was a pretty big struggle. And then a week later, you manhandled n number two Nebraska. And really didn't look back after I'm that. Bumps. I know, I'm right? See, I can't. It, I'm, not all, I'm not, all, I'm not always this. messing with him. <laughs> but, but Seth, with this celebration, <laughs> he did the Will Ferrell when, oh, when Toombs dude. was. Running I was back. a bad celebrator, man. I'm telling it you, was actually, it was all it was all natural, just yeah, visceral celebration. That's a good celebrator. Yeah, and just don't you know? You, you didn't care what he looked like. Just there was had no, fun. Yeah, just feeling uh, it in the moment, and that was a. That, my point, though, was it was a, a young old line that yeah. didn't look – well, it wasn't. That's the, that's well, the thing. That's there's the a thing difference between being me. young and inexperienced. And, like, yeah. I was young, but we did have an offensive line yeah. that I would say was – besides Samisi and Cameron Spikes to a certain extent, you had three of us that I think were new starters, I don't think right? that's true. I think Is that not true? Of, Andy no. Vincent wasn't – was he a returning I guess starter? Vincent was. You'd be a wreck. Rex Tucker was a not a starter the year before. Oh, he, he was played. not? Okay. I'm pretty positive he wasn't a so starter. So you're talking about guys like Layden Robinson then that have been in – and that's where I think not having Luke Matthews has hurt. I think not having Luke Matthews has been a pretty devastating blow. And it makes me – here's the one thing I'd say. 
I think I wonder what the conversations were during the offseason about getting a, a transfer veteran that can play center and maybe swing center and guard because you knew Bryce Foster is going to be outstanding player. At the time, you weren't even thinking about him as a center. I know. Nobody um, was. Wyckoff, I don't think, is a center by trade. So at what point would they have sat there and said, you know, I, we can't go into the season with just Luke when his whole career he's been banged up, unfortunately. But they, they almost like they didn't get an insurance policy there. And here we are where your, your next best option is a true freshman that played two, three, four games of, of center ever in high school. And – Seth, you know this better than David and I. How hard is that? You redshirted. You yeah. were a, you were a highly regarded center prospect. You but you played tackle in high school, right? And so and had the benefit of a. Imagine Bryce Foster it's, with dude, a red shirt. It is to tough. Learn. So it, I think you're seeing that, and well, I think what, what, you're going to see a lot you, of Deuce fathery this weekend. I hope you see a lot. I do too. I mean, I'm not trying to bag that's two on true freshmen. the guy that's out that was out there last week, but he struggled. He, he did, and and I think that uh, father is going to be the guy, or Leighton Rob. Whatever yeah. happens there, I don't know. Whoever, whatever they roll out is going to be a both. better situation, uh, physically speaking. And I think that's what's got to happen. Leighton was definitely missed, you know what I mean? And yeah. so I think that getting him back, if he is, is going to be great. But at the, at the center position, he, he's going to get more comfortable. Yeah. The more reps he gets, I guarantee you For sure. that they're like, look, man, get on the same level as your guards. Because that was an issue with him. He's not getting on the same level as his, as his guards. Explain that. And it, well, him. like it, well, it was – talked about Yeah, it was, his, it was exposed – a little bit last week because of what they did. They were twisting and turning every play. It was ridiculous. So when you when that happens, the first thing the center's got to do is got to get on the same level with the guards so they can mm -hmm. trade all this stuff off. If the center is not – because look at the lineup. Where's the center? He's in front of everybody, right? And so if the guard's playing here and the center's up here and they're running twists, you're going to get picked off and all that stuff. So you got to get to the same level. I know I'm you know trying to insider baseball there, but no, that's you just got to get to the same level as your guard so y'all can pass off games with one another. And then when that happens, it's a seamless transition. But if you're on different levels, you're going to look like a mess. You're going to get picked off, and it's going to look ugly. And when that happens, he gets the experience of doing that and setting back. There's no need for him to be in front of the guards. Something's got to happen. Either the guard's got to step up and get on the same level, or he's got to – but usually 100% of the time it's the center getting back to the same level as the guard. All right. Is it reasonable to expect this line – to do what we expect them to do? Like, is from what we've seen yeah. so far, is it reasonable to expect against Arkansas they'll be able to establish the run and give Zach time? I really do. And I, the, the, the reason that I'm saying that is because of the, the physical ability that these guys got, that, that when they get out there, they can do it. I mean, I'm really – I promise you, I'm not trying to put on – they haven't done it all year, and I know that I'm like – it's like, oh, wow, this guy's crazy. But I think that they can get things moving in the right direction – that group that's out there is physically talented where they can – if it clicks, man, they, maybe this is the game that it clicks and they get it going. Well, and, if it, and if they don't and they roll out what they did against Colorado or they keep doing the same stuff lose. they get against New Mexico, yeah, they will. Well, and it, it's going to be – I think this game is 100% going to be based on how this offensive line plays. Like everybody else, I have, a, I have faith that everybody's going to execute on this team. I have faith that Calzada is going to execute – Okay. See, I don't if he do, if the O line. Well, does. I think those two go that goes, hand in yes, hand. Yes, they go to hand me, in so hand. So I would lump them together. But I think this, what you're saying, I, I agree completely. And it's going to happen at some point. I don't have a feeling it's just going to pop up and happen this week. But if they can just make a noticeable improvement enough that Spiller can run and they can get A chain just a little space to make those yeah. three plays he has to make, you know, to, to, help ease the burden or put put points on the board ideally this to me guys is about a, it is truly survive and advance this is like now arkansas is not a mid-major but they're not alabama <laughs> yeah. i know they're they're not 2019 lsu they're not the 85 bears they're not a mid-major anymore but this is one of those early round ncaa tournament games where 
you know anything can happen. You know that team's capable of beating you, and you know you have to go out and just – you maybe know we're not going to be just in stride yet. We have to just grind it out this first weekend and get through it, and then we can really roll. And I think that's where a ms at. Like, figure it out, whether it's mm -hmm. – the defense holding them under 10, whether it's the offense, you know, figuring out to score 24, 27 points and that gets you, whatever it may be, figure it out because it's going to come together for that O-line. Calzada is going to get better as a result of that and experience. And you're also going to get Haynes back. You are getting Haynes back. I think at the latest after that bye, I bet he'd be ready for South Carolina and then I'd have to probably make a decision on Hell, maybe Missouri. I think South Carolina would be the decision. I mean, you have two weeks after that. And if Zach's doing fine, I think you could stick. But the point is, you're getting him back. There are a lot of reasons this team's going to get better and better. And you look at the schedule, and if they do that over the next four weeks or so, if they can win tomorrow, their record might look exactly the same as it would have otherwise. It just <laughs> might be a much more difficult path to get there. Let me ask you guys this. Can A&M win? if they abandon the run. We didn't see a lot of running against Colorado. We didn't see as much as we wanted to in the first half against New Mexico. Can they beat Arkansas if they abandon the run early? If, they, if, if the offensive line is providing time to operate, yes. And if, if, if they're allowing guys to slip through like you know 50% of the time or they're getting pressure or whatever, then no. I mean, if, if the offensive line is doing their job, I think Zach can sit back there – and do what he needs to do to be an effective quarterback. But if he's getting – like, again, you're going to know early on and whether adjustments or whatever is made as the game goes, you're going to – if you see the offensive line out there performing, you should be like, man, I feel really good today about how we're yeah. going to go out there. And if we can shut down their zone read a little bit. <laughs> then yeah, like, that's a whole other conversation know, after we right, come back. But, but I, here's what I think, go along with what you said. Let's be careful what we call abandon the run. Because I do well, think Jimbo's not going to abandon yeah. the run. I mean, that's well, just how. It but goes. I think I think if early in the game, I, I could see fans going, "Why aren't we running?" But I I think they're going to tell you you can't run by their numbers. And, and there's a level, there's a balancing act right. towards saying, "Well, we're not going to let you dictate what we do just by your line. We're going to run the ball some." But there's also the these passes are there to be had. I, I'm going to look. One of my key stats after this game is going to be to look at, like, Zach Calzada throwing the ball on first down because they're going to do it. And, and it's just like at Colorado. Jimbo's going to go with what – if they're saying here, right? there's completions for you to be had on the perimeter right? where we're weaker because they're not very good at corner – but we don't think your receivers and quarterback can execute, but those are the plays that are there to be taken. At some level, Jimbo's going to try it yeah. because it's, it's, the, it's what's there. It's, 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 it's what they're giving you. You can't just not take it and run into seven, eight in the box. You know, you can't do you that You can't be either. stubborn. I mean, yeah. that, that's just not going to work. So if we, got, if we have seven and they put in eight in the box, then it's our job to execute. I mean, that's just plain and simple of the deal. If you can't do that, you deserve to lose. And yeah. you, you've got to be able to pass in those situations. Because running is, is – there are certain times, like maybe 10% of the time, you, you'll go, okay, we're outnumbered, we're still going to run. Yeah. But every other time, you better be throwing, and then you better be executing. They also ran – they also – Ole Miss last year couldn't run against like a three-man front. And, and so as a result, they're dropping seven, eight. They pick off Matt Corral six times. Because they, they just kept throwing into that because they couldn't run against. I, that would be the nightmare is if A&M can't block three and four guys. But I think they can. And I think that's the difference between A&M and an Ole Miss from last year. I think that's the difference between A&M and Texas is A&M will be able to not only block, but Jimbo will scheme out. You're not going to sit in that and have us not run against you. All right, let's get more on that. We'll talk about stopping K.J. Jefferson when we come back and uh, some health on both sides of the ball. But right now, I want to remind you to text radio to 900-900 for your chance to win the big Friday giveaway. Courtesy of our friends at Aggieland Outfitters, we're going to unveil that winner here in the next hour. So you want to make sure you, you are listening for that. But be a part of it. And I, I want to show you guys this uh, Texas A&M Cutter Buck and Traverse Stripe uh, Half Zip. I love it. I've been uh, – there's the camera. Which camera am I looking at? There we go. 
It's a beauty. It's uh, got that dry tech material. So like the weather like today, perfect. It's too, you know, it gets a little warmer. You can still wear it. It's cool. You can wear it. It's got that moisture wickening, breathable, maximum comfort fabric out there. It is a very stylish, stylish looking top that you would like to wear with the A&M logo on that chest. It's just wear it proud, wear it during, you know, semi-hot days, cool days, you name it. It is beautiful for it. And you can get it at Aggieland Outfitters for $129.99. It is a beauty out there. Make sure you visit them when you're in town or check them out online. They do such great work out there. You want to see Fadi and the gang there at Aggieland Outfitters. This is the Zone 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Wolf Cleaning Services of Aggieland reminds all listeners that last year over 50% of our children were bullied or teased. This daily ritual leaves them in despair, feeling like there's no way out. Be someone that a child can go to for help and let's stop the intimidation now. This message is from Priscilla and the crew at Wolf Cleaning Services of Aggieland. Equipped to handle all your home and office cleaning needs. They don't cut corners, they clean them. Call 979 618 1019. Wolf Cleaning Services of Aggieland, wishing our kids a happy and healthy school year. Does your bank know your first name? At Normandy State Bank, they do. Normandy State Bank is locally owned, controlled, and operated. This local personal touch means banking decisions are made on site the same day you request it. Normandy State makes banking easy. They're open Saturdays, offer state of the art online banking, bill paying, fund transfers, check and statement images. Normandy State, where customer service is their priority. Normandy State Bank, rock solid. Member FDIC. Brian Broadcasting is your home for high school football. Brian High, A&M Consolidated, Rudder, and College Station High play on the Brian Broadcasting family of stations. No matter where you are, hear every play, every game, all season long. Thanks to Amarillo National Bank, Blinn College, BCS Toyota, and Ed Phillips Plumbing. To find out when and where to hear your favorite team, go to BrazosFootball.com. People join Walk MS to raise awareness and funds that change the world for everyone affected by multiple sclerosis. MS attacks the brain and spinal cord. It's the most common neurological disease leading to disability in young adults. Walk MS brings communities together, creating teams with friends, loved ones, and coworkers to rally around those we care about and end MS forever. Join us. Together we are stronger. Walk MS fundraising accelerates research breakthroughs and life-changing breakthroughs. It will take all of our passion, determination, and fundraising to end MS forever. Together, we can change the world for people with MS. Join us. Register today, start a team, and raise funds at walkms.org. You can hear Astros baseball all season and postseason long on Sports Radio 1150 and 93.7 FM plus Gospel 97.3 FM thanks to Kelly Burke Dozer. The Astros look to make another World Series run. You can hear the games on The Zone or on Gospel 97.3 FM thanks to Kelly Burke Dozer. The Houston Astros, the World Series, listen in all thanks to Kelly Burke Dozer. Hi, friends. It's Texax Radio. We are presented by David Gardner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. It is the final countdown. Uh, we got a lot to get into here over the uh, the next, well, what is it, 35 minutes or so here with Seth and Billy in studio. And uh, we left it in the last segment about stopping K.J. Jefferson and, and what he brings to the table. I said this early in the show, and you guys may tell me I'm crazy, but... Hey. Alton m- must <laughs> fog over here. <laughs> Came over here touching everything. He might, in my opinion, and tell me I'm Dalton crazy. Dalton or K.J. Jefferson? K.J. Jefferson might be the most important person in this game. If you stop him, I think you stop Arkansas. If you force him to throw, you're going to win the game, I believe, hands down with that defense. I'll agree with you if you, if, you bear, if you follow me on this. Okay. He'll beat you throwing, but not if you know it's coming. 
he he can throw the ball. Let's not you know, here. Don't act shocked if this guy starts completing passes down the field. Sure, because he can do. He's got a big arm, but if the Aggies know he's throwing it. And they might throw on some early downs, too, just to get him in a rhythm and get some wide-open play action, get a little guy coming out of the backfield or a little receiver cross, you know, easier throws just to get him feeling it, too. It's, kind of, it's not all that dissimilar. But with, it's kind of like if Haynes King were playing in this game, right? It'd still be a tough test for Haynes as a passer against Catalan and Morgan and, and Poole and Henry and that, the, the Barry Odom. It wouldn't have been like, hey, Haynes King's going to go for sure and just carve these guys up. It would be a mentally challenging, too. So Jimbo probably would have started by getting him on the move, getting him some easy throws to Widemeyer and, and some stuff early yeah. and get him into it. And I think that's what you'll see them do with KJ. The difference with KJ and Zach is KJ can run. I'm with you. If you can stop him the runner, I don't think Arkansas's like conventional running game is going to gash up A and M, and so then you're talking about them being behind the chain. You're, th- you're talking about Mike Elko putting KJ Jefferson in passing downs, where he has to you know figure out what Elko's doing, figure out what these veteran DBs and linebackers are disguising before the snap. Are they blitzing all that? And I think a thinking KJ Jefferson, he's he's not a he, he's a He's not a guy that's going to sit there and, and check through progressions and, and drill in an accurate throw into a tight window. It's not who he is. If you can put him in those spots, it's a completely different football team. Rice did that. Sure. Texas did not. Yeah. I mean, we we, man, difference. our defense over there is just so phenomenal that I like. I think we're going to do whatever we got to do to, to get him stopped. I think that he, he's going to make his plays. He's going to mm-hmm. get yards. But I think that we uh, we have the guys over there. I mean, like I guess coming into the year, I was like, man, we got a good defense. And then as this thing has progressed, and I've seen guys step up. I don't want to say names because I don't want to give away my sleeper picks, oh, etc. Wow. But they've been phenomenal over there, man. They really have played great. Yeah, they've made mistakes at times. Everyone has. Yeah. But I'm just like thoroughly impressed by. Almost every position, for real, man. It's just been yeah. really, really good to see what those guys have done out there. And I have no reason to think that that Saturday is going to be any different when they roll out and you know roll do, out <laughs> pressure. You know, KJ pressure Jefferson and oh man, everything I Two say. Right, what else? What else? <laughs> you know, I don't have anything for what else. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I, I but it, I'm not afraid of his passing. I mean, I'm sure he's got it in him, but I think that. I'm that afraid we, with what goes. we've got going on, do what? <laughs> <laughs> Another one. Ray Parker Jr. Ghostbuster. Dawson Prayers. Is he no longer with us? Oh, really? I don't think he is. Dal- Dalton that. may want to Google that on me. I may be wrong there. I don't want to kill him prematurely. Yeah, but. So uh, I was going to ask you guys: Why do we hear so much about Barry Odom confusing Zach, and what that's? And, and we heard it in the off season, leading up to the season with Haynes as well. Why am I not hearing more about Elko? Who does the exact same thing? Yeah, like, exactly. You know, that, that's part of the story too. I said this to Steve yesterday. Elko and Jimbo. Right. What did did we not watch the game? And now, granted, Kellen Mond made some incredible throws in that game. And again, I go back to people. Go watch a montage, and there's scouting reports that show it of some of the throws Kellen made last year. Where guys were way less open than than you would be yeah. against Seth well, that's right what now. Zach has been doing too. But Kellen did it all year, and if you go back and watch some of the throws he made against Arkansas in that first three quarters, absurd. But right, Jimbo Fisher designed a game plan last year that put up forty two points against almost these same guys. Now Catalan got ejected in the first quarter for targeting. Yeah. That was a big deal. Part of what Widemeyer had two touchdowns after that. But these same guys, and the Aggies went uh, up and down for 42 points. Now, I know they had senior O linemen. Kellen was on target. But the point was Jimbo out schemed him. You, you watched Anias rip through the middle for a 20 yard touchdown. You watch that little pass where he ran the little wheel, catches it 25 yards or so into the end zone. That was just in the first quarter. The red zone passes to Widemeyer for touchdowns. 
A chain, you know, went for about 30, 25 for a touchdown. They they didn't have any gash rip plays. They Jimbo Fisher methodically took apart that barrier. But that's but that you're year. saying it right now. That's that's his mo. Jimbo's mo is methodical. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Stick to it. And it's just like if they get out there and you see them running the ball, and it's let's pretend that it's a close game. You see them running the ball and they're getting three, three, three. He's not going to. What we talked about earlier, our ban in the run and four mm -hmm. sacks. He's going to continue doing that. Yeah. And he's going to continue doing, running and running and running, passing. And if they get behind, of course, you're, he's going to pass. But it's just the same thing against Colorado. We never got out of the game. Well, yeah. What did he do? He stuck to the run. He stuck to the run. And everyone's like, oh, this is ridiculous. You know what I mean? And then eventually those things break. And any kind of a, and I'm not saying we're a great running team team but here's mm. it we can be yeah but yeah. here's the key to a great running team or what you what, got great what is running a feature backs is, a good is place that they to start. they struggle they struggle they struggle and then toward the end of the third quarter and like all the fourth quarter boom it's yeah. over they're getting five yards a pop six yeah. yards a pop that's what great running teams do yeah by the way ray parker jr alive okay. his career ended 40 years ago though that's what i meant to say <laughs> <It's okay>. hopefully <laughs> poor yeah, guy that's what we call <laughs> his career that's what i meant I, I feel like you killed somebody wonder. off a few weeks ago, too, on here. Like, this is the second person no, you've terminated. I haven't killed anybody. Somebody else will, will, message, will, will tell me on the message. Yeah, I feel like you killed somebody off. But Ray You're Parker's right. career did end a long time ago. One good song. Um, hey, so can we talk a little injuries on both sides of the ball? Because I think it could be yeah, a narrative. Significant. Uh, we got to hit a break. And when we, when we do come back, the freak of the week and the sleeper of the week here on the final countdown on Tex Ags Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. I'm Chelsea Reber with your community calendar on The Zone. This Friday, the Brian High cheerleaders are hosting their annual hamburger dinner. Tickets are $12 at the door, dine in, or take it to go. Come by the BHS cafeteria on Friday from 4.30 to 7.00. A food drive for Louisiana families affected by Hurricane Ida is being held Saturday from 8 to 5 at Sam's Club. Get a free car seat inspection Saturday morning at the Brazos Center parking lot. Appointments are required. Click the link on our community calendar at W.